So your baby chick brooder setup. This is my favorite setup that I've used. It's um, originally made to house a rabbit, but it's fantastic for baby chicks. So I have my pinky sized wire mesh, which is gonna keep out most predators. However, if you notice, I have added screening to the outside of this brooder. And the reason for that is <laughs> We actually had a red rat snake, oh my goodness, who's screaming, get through this size wire and it was still big enough to kill like two week old baby chicks. It killed three of my two week old Easter eggers, tried to eat them and was not successful so it just kept killing the next chick. So that's why I've added the screening but it also helps deter drafts and things. So you want your brooder draft free, ideally. So on the open wall, you notice I have a hunk of um, PVC. It's actually softening, but it works just fine to prevent drafts. And then, um, so that's my brooder cage, but you can use anything. I prefer the size if I have more than one or two chicks, which I typically do, but you can use, I've seen bins used in other things. The only issue you're gonna have when you get smaller and smaller is your heat source might become a problem. So my favorite heat source is this plate. And the reason I love a heat plate over a heat lamp, the benefits of a heat plate, it's easily adjustable. Um, it's dark at night so your babies can sleep at night, which I think is good for them. Where if you have a light, they're gonna be up wandering around on and off all night long, waking each other up. They're just rude, they'll run right over each other. Um, and then also it's very easy for them to self-regulate. You put it there, they have plenty of room, they can go away from it, they can go near it. So if you're using a heat lamp, you want to make sure it has a hard glass ceramic base on it. It should not be plastic or any other material. The ceramic ones are the ones made for a heat bulb. And you can also look at your wattage too and make sure you're in compliance with, because that could be a fire hazard if you don't have a proper base. The one I just had in my hand I think is a reptile one where this one is actually more of your chicken version of a heat lamp. But the other problems with heat lamps, your birds could get overheated because it's projecting a large field and so you want them the first week 95 degrees, the second week 90 degrees, the third week 85, you reduce it by 5 degrees every week that you have available to them. And they'll self-regulate. If they get cold, they'll go into the heat, but they should be able to get away from it too if they get too hot. So, and so they normally have this guard here, but it can get knocked off. It just kind of snaps on. That's supposed to prevent, help prevent fires if your lamp falls or gets knocked off. So we have that little guard. And then if you look at how this lamp is put together, you typically just clamp it on to something. So it could get knocked off. And then it, um, I know what you call this, wing nut. It has a wing nut and it clamps onto the ceramic base. So that could get loose, that could get knocked off. And it kind of pinches onto the metal here too. So as you can see, I've tied string and a tie wrap on this. And so I will triple secure my heat lamps if I do use this, which I have before I got my heat plate. And I also tied the cord up to whatever I can to hang it. So I don't trust these. Like, it'd be a stupid reason to have your, your barn or house burned down using one of these. So I would do everything possible to secure it so that you don't get a fire. This is what I ended up doing with my heat plate. As you can see, it has three different levels on the little feet. Here you can adjust it as the chicks get older. The lower one was too low, I thought, though. But when I had it on the medium one, I kind of thought, well, they were a little bit chilly. So I ended up tilting mine. So the back of the heat plate is on the lowest level, and the front is on the medium level. And also I have standard size chickens and bantam chickens, which are miniatures. So now that these are a few days old, and I know they know where the food and water is. They're starting to scratch a lot and kick up the shavings. I go ahead and put my food and water on a brick. And these are just regular red bricks. That way it helps prevent 
all these shavings from getting kicked in because they will literally fill their food and water with shavings and then they won't be able to get to it, which is bad. So you, um, that really helps deter the kicking the shavings up in their food and water and filling it up. But you'll still find you need to clean it out several times a day. All right, and the last thing on your brooder setup, I like to use, this is called large flake, not the fine, um, pine shavings. I like these over everything else I've used because they kind of turn them over and so to me they last a little bit longer and are a little bit cleaner than some of the other options. I know there's a pellet bedding out there. I've never used it so I really can't say much about it. I just am very happy with the pine shavings. And the problem you're going to find with the fine as opposed to the large flake pine shavings is there's a lot of tiny bits and your birds will eat those and you don't want them getting impacted with pine shaving bits and I've only ever had one baby that impacted himself from the bits and I think they just from the start ate nothing but the pine shaving bits they never really found the food so now what I do the first day is I just put paper towels down and make sure they know what the food is where it is and then after the first day you can put your shavings down but you want to make sure you have a grippy surface if you have something slick like a box they could potentially get what's called spraddle leg. They'll, their legs will slip out from under them and they'll pull a muscle and then they won't be able to get their legs back under them to walk. You'll have to splint it and let them heal and let the muscles retrain how to stay under them. So that could be a problem too. So you want some kind of grippy surface, whatever that looks like. People have used puppy pads, but something that they're not going to just eat. Um, so I like the large flake pine shavings for bedding myself. And I've heard not to use cedar, that cedar is toxic to birds. So I have never used it and I really don't know how much of a hazard that is, but it's not recommended to use cedar, even though it seems like it would be a good idea and you'd have a nice fresh smelling uh, brooder. but. So just stick with one of the other options. One more thing on bedding. Um, you can use hay or straw also. I just find with hay or straw, when they poop, it just sits on top where the shavings, the shavings kind of get kicked over and turned over. And so the, to me, it stays, it's easier to keep clean when the poop is kind of mixed in with the shavings. They're doing their job then. But the benefits of using hay or straw is if you garden, it's fantastic. You can just take the stuff out and throw it in your garden. But what I did when I used hay or straw was I just would sprinkle fresh on a couple times a day and then you just take it all out every three days or two days depending on how old your chicks are and how many you have in there and stuff and just throw it in your garden. So other options. And with your brooder, another reason you want to have something secure like wire mesh. It will also keep out rats and raccoons and you might have other predators where you live. But raccoons will reach through chicken wire or any other kind of wire that's big enough for them to put their arm in. And they will cheese grate your birds and they work in packs. So you'll have one raccoon that flushes them to the side, even though they have all this space to get away and you think they would be smart enough to get away and be safe. Chickens can be herded and flushed and so they'll work in packs and they'll rip apart your birds. I, I had it happen is how I learned the hard way, like a lot of people, so learn from my mistakes. And when you build your coop and or your brooder, always use pinky size wire mesh and you can even use a second wire, which I'd recommend. Cause depending on how well you secure it, they can rip apart the edges and stuff too of your wire mesh. So you basically need to build Fort Knox because everything likes chicken. But um, rats will get through chicken wire or any gap that's bigger than an inch and they'll follow your birds in, at night and they'll just keep following them and taking a bite out of their back end until they kill them and then they eat the insides out. So they're vile creatures when it comes to your chickens. So it's best to keep out predators rats, snakes, all of it. Everything wants to eat your chicken.